Switch screws. Fuck you. I'm going to blow your doors. Yeah. Completely off. <laughs>Hey folks, Casey here, and welcome back to the channel. If you guys have been with me for any amount of time, you know that I can kind of obsess about things. Uh, I get something in my mind and I just have to figure it out. who needs any help tuning a carburetor, but lately I've had fuel injection on my mind. Now, the last thing I want to do is screw up the period correct cool factor of this old Willys pickup truck. I mean, it is a 1960s hot rod 4x4 in the truest sense. I mean, just check out this sweet early Chevy 283 small block. Down to the hand lettered valve covers, the single plane Y and front fill intake, and the ram's horn exhaust manifolds. About the most modern thing on this engine is this air cleaner and the Edelbrock carb but it's still a carburetor, so it's still period correct. Now, I've been daily driving this thing lately, and I plan to daily drive it this winter. And it gets cold here in the winter time, and the altitude is high, and gas is expensive. Those are all good reasons to go fuel injected on a project like this. Now, fuel injection can, at least in theory, do a better job in every single one of those scenarios. But is it as cool as a carburetor? Now, I can already hear you guys typing away in the comments, but Casey, these modern EFI conversions aren't that well sorted. They have issues. They just don't work. And, well, you're not wrong. I mean, Holly screwed up pretty bad with the Sniper 1. Yeah, I think most of them worked just fine, but they had a lot of units out there with problems, and a lot of people ended up throwing them in the trash. Anyway, that's what we're going to talk about today. So, without further ado, let's... All right, folks. Today, we are talking about aftermarket EFI conversion systems, and there are quite a few of them on the market to choose from. Um, before we get too far into the video, I'd like to appeal to you all to hit that like button, uh, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hopefully, I'll throw something out here interesting and you'll feel like joining into the conversation legitimately. So, so please drop a comment and let's talk about what we're talking about here today. There are quite a few different aftermarket EFI conversion systems on the market today. I think Fitech and Fast were probably a couple of the first to market. Holly came out with the Sniper 1. Um, a system that I feel was maybe rushed to market a little bit um, and had some definite issues. If you go out there and you Google Holly Sniper, um, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, Summit has one now. Jegs has one now. Special Officer Doofy. Jegs. Edelbrock has their ProFlow unit, which actually looks like a really good system. Holly has now the second generation Sniper or the Sniper 2 as they're calling it. And one that I've been seeing a lot lately is Aces EFI. And we're going to talk about Aces because I think they might actually be onto something with their kit and the price is right. So I've been very curious about getting into the aftermarket EFI conversion thing. I've had cars come through my shop that would benefit from EFI, but I've never played with these systems. And I don't want to bite off something and be in over my head. Um, especially once I started reading some of the feedback about how some of these systems, you know, they cost thousands of dollars. And some people just can't get them to work and they can't get the manufacturers to stand behind the products and help them out to get them to work. The Holly Sniper, for example, has a 90 day warranty. Um, most people don't even install parts within 90 days of buying them. I do. I try to get things uh, done immediately when I buy them for that very reason. But 90 days isn't a lot of time if you do have an issue. So something to consider there. So as I often do when I'm thinking about something, I put it out to Instagram. You know, I'm considering EFI for my Willis pickup truck.
because I'm going to be driving from 4,500 to 6,100 feet elevation in temperatures approaching and even below zero uh, some mornings. And so EFI could be beneficial in that situation for sure if it works. So I put it out to Instagram. Like I said, I put a picture of my truck, my truck, people get a kick out of how original, I shouldn't say original because it's got a small block in it and it's a Jeep. It didn't come with a small block, but how period correct it is. And, uh, and a lot of people said, don't change it. But I got quite a bit of feedback. Uh, overall, the vote was about 75, 25 that I should do the EFI conversion. But here are some of the, uh, the detractors that were in my comments. <clears throat> Matt Field at Wallington Hot Rods up in the Pacific Northwest uh, tried to install a first gen system on a 79 Bronco that was a customer's vehicle. He said, I've had nothing but issues with a sniper on a customer's 79 Bronco. It's getting pulled for a carburetor. It's left the truck stranded multiple times and I still haven't figured out why. I'm not against EFI, but this sniper stuff is basically an electronic carburetor similar to TBI of the 90s Chevrolet products. While it has benefits over carbed applications, I'd be much more interested in something that is port injected like the modern EFI setups or like the Edelbrock ProFlow for that example. Now to give a converse point, uh, my friend Doug at Imagine Injection said, I have both. Sniper on a 390 in our 75 Ford High Boy. 289 is a Holley carburetor in our 68 Mustang. I have personally done six snipers, but I do them at Imagine Injection World HQ as we have the software there. Can they run great out of the box? Yes, but I've seen few that don't benefit from a little laptop tuning after 100 miles or so. Do they have problems? Occasionally, but out of the hundreds, yep, that's accurate, that Inject Imagine Injection World Headquarters has installed, there's maybe been a handful with any significant issues. I drove the sniper injected 390 all over Phoenix in 114 degree heat yesterday with AC on and it ran like a Ford. Outstanding. Uh, my buddy Duff Ryan uh, at Dufro on Instagram. Uh, he's, a, he's a classic car wrench. He does a lot of vintage racing stuff. Cool guy. Uh, he said, I've had nothing but success except for the one that shipped without a fuel pressure diaphragm in the return line. Also the directions say you don't have to run a tank return. It works way better with one. Good advice. My buddy Armand Ebb, uh, at Save Classic Cars on Instagram, probably quite a few of you know him. He said, Holly Sniper is the biggest scam <laughs> on the planet. They have a damn good marketing team because what they sell is dog <laughs> Way to not mince words, Armand. <laughs> uh, uh, David, my buddy David, at Flat Out 51 on Instagram. I know there was a big design flaw in the first snipers when used on Fords due to the RF interference of the distributor because the computer wasn't shield enough and was in the front bowl of the throttle body. We're going to talk more about this later. I believe they fixed this in the new sniper too. They did. The computer is now on the, uh, the left side, passenger side in an American car of the carburetor looking at it from the front. You having a rear mount dizzy, I believe they work well but as, as you would have on a small block Chevy. But personally, I'm looking at the Holley Terminator X Stealth. The computer mounts in the cabin and is far more advanced. Also looking into the Edelbrock Pro Flow 4. I've read great things about that one. David went on to say that the original works pretty well with the small block Chevy because the distributor's in the back and therefore it has a little bit of distance between it and the computer. I've been told by a few people using their HyperSpark Dizzy that it makes a big difference in the way they work too. A little more money, but to avoid a headache, it might be worth it. I've also read several comments online about people having issues when they install the HyperSpark and it running great with an HEI, which they say not to run. The thing about electronics, and I've definitely learned this with my Langmuir systems table and all the issues I had with that, is that uh, RFI interference screws electronics up and it can come from anywhere. There are some best practices you can use to mitigate RFI, but they don't always work. And some units seem more prone to RFI interference than others. So it could just be a luck of a draw quality control type issue there. So it's something to consider. The OEMs go to great lengths to eliminate RFI and um, computers are rarely sitting on top of the hot motor. But again, we'll get more into that later. David also went on to say that he's read wrapping the distributor with a rag than aluminum foil to stop a lot of the RF interference. Does it really launch bubbles? Does it really launch? Does the 10 man have a sheet metal cock? Not first hand experience, but an abundance of over research. And that's why I like David, because he is a true enthusiast and he really does kind of get into the weeds with a lot of stuff. Um, that's kind of laughable. I mean, if you're wrapping a rag around your distributor, you're probably introducing some other uh, potential issues into your vehicle setup. But uh, 
But that's just some of the lengths people have gone to to try to make these things work. To that end, Uncle Tony's Garage did a great YouTube video. I'll try to put a little tag up here in the corner of the screen so you can click on it. He titled it the EFI conversion debacle. And he goes into all the differences between why these aftermarket universal kits that are made to fit basically every application that you can come up with with a four barrel carburetor mount are just nowhere near as good as the OEM injection that these manufacturers have spent millions of dollars doing R&D on. And, and he brings up some really good points. And then my buddy Ryan Bush at VC Classics on Instagram said that I've never had good luck with any other than stock LS or HAL, which is based on GM. So pretty, uh, pretty rough comments on the Holly Sniper. Now, to be fair, I think a lot of this is based on the Sniper 1. And like I said, I personally believe, and I have no firsthand experience, but I personally believe that the Sniper 1 was maybe rushed to market a little bit. I do, like I said in the intro to the video, I do think they have way more Sniper 1 units out there that work than don't. But boy, if you want to see the worst example of a Holly Sniper 1 not working, and then Holly's customer service and tech support just completely falling on its face, go check out Timeless Steel Garage in his video titled, Why I Ditch Sniper EFI. I'll put a link up here in the corner to that as well. I mean, Holly, Holly, Holly's a big company, to be fair. They got a lot of moving parts. They've got a lot of divisions. They bought up a lot of brands. What Timeless Steel Garage assesses is that Holly has farmed its customer service, not its tech support, but its customer service, out to a third party company. And that makes some sense in a company that size. But he, he charges that these folks don't know anything about the products that they're providing customer service for. And so that makes the disconnect between working with their tech support and their customer service department a bit of an issue when you're trying to do a warranty claim or something like that. Long story short, Timeless Steel Garage had a defective uh, injection unit. The throttle body, ECU, return, all of that's kind of baked into the part that bolts to the intake manifold. That was defective. He had installed lines. He had installed wiring. He had all the pieces of the puzzle put into his car. And presumably, he just needed a new carburetor unit, right? Customer service didn't get that. They said they can't do an exchange without having the whole system stripped off his car and sent back. That is a huge waste of time and resources, especially for any shop who's installing these things professionally. Now, uh, full transparency, Holly did reach out to him after he posted this video, which is sitting now at 194,000 views. So you're damn right they reached out to him. And they offered to send him a full Holly Sniper 2 upgraded system with all the bells and whistles. And it looks like they sent him a lot of other stuff too to make him happy and happy he seems but that video is still up and uh and it still serves as a warning to anybody considering a first gen holly which summit racing and jags are still selling so why do we want an efi conversion in the first place right this here this here's the best part watch this watch this watch 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 it just starts it just works that clip was from Power and Performance's YouTube video uh, installing a Holly Sniper 2 on his, I believe it's a 65 Mustang. I'll put a link to that video up here as well. Um, that's why you want it. To quote Hunter Thompson, to light off like a frog in a dynamite pond. Say something. He was referring to the electric windows on his Cadillac Landshark in that quote, but you know, that's how we want our cars to start. And we want our cars to start that way when it's zero degrees outside too. And that is the promise of electronic fuel injection, right? It'll fire up the first time right away in every type of situation. Now, Nashville Early Bronco does a great video, put a link up here, on what electronic fuel injection conversions don't solve. And he goes into basically, they are not a Band-Aid. They, uh, they don't cover up any running issues that your engine has, any internal issues. And in fact, they actually will magnify quite a few of the issues based on all the sensors that they use to collect input from the engine on what it's doing. So EFI is not a blanket fix, but is it a gimmick? You know, that's kind of, that's kind of the thing, the question that we have to answer, right? So after doing a lot of research on this subject, here's the conclusion that I've come to. These electronic fuel injection kits um, are hit and miss. They're not all created equal. 
I think the Holly second generation, the Sniper 2, is probably a lot better than the Sniper 1. Uh, right off the bat, it moves the ECU, which is located inside the throttle body, off to the side. So you get a little bit more distance. Basically, you're splitting the difference between the Ford and Chevy guys, right? But it sounds like it's probably far enough from the distributor to eliminate a lot of RFI interference issues. Your spark plug wires matter too. Uh, they also went to an external regulator on the Sniper 2, which the internal regulator supposedly caused a lot of issues there as well. So do I think the Sniper 2 is worth it? I think it's probably going to work just fine for the vast majority of people who buy it, but I'm not wild about Holly's 90-day warranty, for one, and I'm still not wild about the idea of having an ECU mounted on top of your engine where it's exposed to extreme heat and vibration. I'd much rather have it inside the car. Uh, the Holly Sniper 2 is also one of the more expensive units on the market, and that would be fine if it worked and their customer service and tech support was stellar, but it sounds like that is actually kind of lacking a little bit. So you're paying for the Holly name, it's a great looking system, and if you do have a problem, you can always post a YouTube video and hope you get 194,000 views like Time to Steel Garage, and then they might stand behind their product where they otherwise wouldn't if you're past that 90 day warranty window. So big bit of a calculation to do as to whether or not that's the system to buy, in my opinion. Now, the Summit Racing and JEGS kits. Special Officer Doofy. JEGS. Both seem a little underdeveloped to me. Uh, just, just as a cursory opinion after doing a little bit of research online, I don't see a lot of options or a lot of parts that work with them. I haven't sat down and read their instruction manuals yet. Maybe they're great, but... Um, the marketing just isn't there and you know let's face it we're all consumers right we need to be marketed to effectively hopefully not lied to but marketed to and i just don't see it with the summiter jigs now feel free to hit me up in the comments if you've run one and you think they're great i think that's great as david at flatout 51 mentioned the holly terminator stealth x moves the ecu inside the vehicle uh plus i love the way that system looks man. looks like a 4150 double pumper holly Great looking system, potentially solves a lot of the issues that the other systems have, but that one carries a hefty price tag. Now the Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 also moves the ECU inside the vehicle, and that seems fantastic. Uh, plus it's port injected with a single four barrel throttle body in the center, but it looks like modern EFI. It doesn't disguise as well as some of these other kits underneath an air cleaner to make it look like you're still carbureted. And you know, for something like the Willis, uh, I need that. Also, I don't want to have to put breathers in my valve covers because I run the front fill intake. So that kind of limits me to a bolt-on carburetor style system for this particular application anyway. And if I'm also looking at this from the perspective of a shop owner who's looking to install EFI conversion systems for his customers in the future, I want to have the most universal system that works so that, you know, I'm not all team Edelbrock and I buy their tools and I invest in learning their system only to have it not really work for a certain customer's car. I hope that makes sense. And then as I'm in the middle of doing all of this research, ACES fuel injection starts popping up in my Facebook feed, in my Instagram feed. Obviously they're using targeted marketing and because I've been Google searching EFI conversions, they found me, right? This system seems too good to be true. It's very inexpensive. Uh, it's almost a thousand dollars less for a comparable system than the Holly Sniper. And, and I'm talking about the full deal, right? Fuel lines, fuel pump, fuel filters, uh, ECU, throttle body, dash panel, distributor. I don't think there's any point in running one of these if you aren't also going to have timing control because timing control is a huge part of making this thing work like a modern fuel injected vehicle. Otherwise, it's just an electronic carburetor, really, with fuel injectors inside of it instead of discharge uh, nozzles and boosters, right? So the full kit, they're about $1,500. Bucks. Uh, it says they're having a sale. seems like they're always having a sale. That's a really good bargain. Their throttle body is heavily branded with their ACES logo. I'm not wild about that, but they do make the kind of classic uh, iridite gold finish like a Holly carburetor, so I do like that. Um, has stainless steel linkage. It looks like it's a quality piece. The ECU is inside the car, and for 1500 bucks, you get 
the injector, the ECU, a dash panel, a distributor, fuel pumps and filters, fuel lines, the whole, everything you need, aside from maybe spark plug wires to do the conversion. Almost a thousand bucks less than the uh, Holly Sniper 2. So Aces is a brand that I'm heavily considering. Driving forward builds on YouTube. I'll put a link up here to his, one of his videos or one of his, or his channel in general. Uh, did Aces kill shot on a 64 Ford Fairlane and the car seems to run fantastically. He's had a couple of hiccups in tuning it. You can't do such a major uh, piece of work on a vehicle without having a couple of hiccups. Nothing's gonna be perfect right out of the box. Uh, but the Aces seems like it's probably pretty good. And with the price, and they give you a year warranty instead of 90 days, and I've actually reached out to their company and their customer support seems like it's there, like you can talk to them. So I'm heavily considering Aces EFI for the Willis. In fact, I reached out to them to see if they'll sponsor me. Sponsor me. Maybe they will. So please hit that like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you'd like to see that, if you'd watch and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And maybe if this video gets enough views, they'll be a little bit more inclined to work with little old me. Sponsor me. Anyway, I'm sure there are things that I wanted to talk about that I forgot to talk about. I made some real short notes for this video. I don't usually do that, but it's hard to sit here and talk for 10 or 15 minutes without having some kind of guideline to stick to. I hope that this content was engaging and intriguing for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. All right, take care. I think Fitech and Fast were probably like a couple of the first to market. Then Holly came out with the Sniper. And my neon sign just crapped out. That's too bad. They're not as cool when they don't work. Anyway.